What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers. We're going to talk about what needs this team still has coming out of the spring. Where might they look into the portal to augment what I feel like is a pretty strong roster? We're going to talk about that on today's Locked On Badgers Plus. Much, much more. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. As always, your team every single day. I uh, really do appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, y'all are amazing. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And as always, we just jump right into it, right? There's no fluff here. We, we just got Badger news. We got things to talk about. Uh, you know, one of the things we talked about on this show... Uh, months ago, we said, hey, listen, uh, this, this portal's popping. You know, they're, they're bringing in every quarterback. These receivers are coming in. They're doing really well. There still might be needs on this roster after spring practice that need to get addressed, right? We talked about who, you know, because the, the staff's going to have um, a real chance to get in there, this new staff, and evaluate positions under live bullets, see who's playing well, see where they need depth, see where they need to shore it up. And we talked about a couple positions that I thought, possibly this is where the staff could still look, right? We talked about running back because you have Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi, and then quite frankly, you had a bunch of question marks, right? You had a Julius Davis who's never been in a pop, Katie Akimeli who was switching over, uh, Jackson Acker who, um, you know, it, it was a fullback, uh, certainly a good athlete. So you have, you certainly have some questions there, Grover Bordelotti. Uh, we thought maybe they would look at adding a third running back. We thought maybe tight end. We talked about tight end just with the, enormous amounts of injuries that position has sustained the last couple of years it's been a, a morgue unit you know Cundiff still not full go you know and really every player in that that group to some degree other than maybe Jack Eschenbach has really suffered injuries dealt with injuries Dakovich has Jake uh, Pugh has um you know Cam Large has etc cetera, etc cetera. Rucci has you know so he said man they might just want to go and get a tight end that is known for durability Right, somebody who you can pencil into that lineup. But yeah, coaches always tell you the best ability is availability, and the Titans haven't been that in the last couple of years. Not their fault, right? Somebody rolled up on Cundiff. It is what it is. But um, so we said maybe maybe tight end, and then we talked about uh, potentially cornerback. Right, that's another spot we looked at and said that's a position where you've got Alex Smith coming back, but we don't know where the depth is. We don't have a lot of veteran pieces there. They had a Jason Maytree, but still. Do you, you're losing Dort, you're losing Jay, Jay Shaw, you're losing guys who played a lot of football for you. You know, um, you lost Caesar Williams. You know, is this something that you want to address? And then, you know, it looks like to me, a lot of these questions have kind of sorted themselves out to some degree, um, you know, except for maybe cornerback, right? Because we saw the staff uh, has reached out to Josh DeBerry. He is a Boston College defensive back, cornerback, 5'11, 177 pounds. He is heard from Wisconsin. There's been communication there. Uh, former teammate, it's, it's of note, he played at Boston College of Jason Matry, who they just brought in this cycle. You think that must get the better some type of, of leg up here, some type of insight into not only insight into DeBerry as a player, because they can ping Matry and say, hey, what type of teammate is this dude? What type of worker is he? What is he like in the locker room? Like the coaches can look at film, but Matry is going to give them insight into the player. And that's a that's a unique advantage Wisconsin has in this standpoint because they have somebody that's been through the battles with this kid. So um, they reached out to him. He's a true corner, 5'11", 177 pounds, like I said. So good size, right? Fickle and, and company. We've seen it on the recruiting trail. We saw it in Cincinnati. They like bigger cornerbacks. You know, they're trending 5'11", 6'1", 6'2". They're trying to stay away from 5'9", 5'10". So he kind of fits into that mold, a lot of experience, almost 150 career tackles, 13 and a half pass breakups. Um, and this is a hot commodity, right? Texas A&M, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Wisconsin have all reached out. This four, those are four brands, right? When you're in a, in a battle with um, SEC schools and, and good SEC schools, you know, Texas A&M and Ole Miss, those are, those are good SEC schools with a lot of resources. And when you're in that type of battle, again, like you can look at his high school recruiting Raw ranking Josh DeBerry. He's a three star, mid three star, went to Boston College. And on the surface, maybe there's not a ton to get excited about. But when you look at the schools reaching out to him in the portal, you can tell he's a commodity. He's somebody that has played a lot of good football, has good film, 
And, you know, there was, this would be a big win for the Badgers. And it's a big win for two reasons to me, right? The first reason is this is somebody that um, – this. Is, the first reason is this is somebody that, uh, you know, helps augment the depth at a position that desperately needs it. But it's somebody that also doesn't block the, the growth of the young players. There's young players on this roster that, you know, I, I really like. I like Avion Jones a lot. I like Jonas DeCluna. I like Jace Arnold. You know, um, I like Ricardo Hallman. You know, who's going to play a big role this year. Uh, you get a guy like Josh DeBerry, and he's going to be here for one year. He's going to act as kind of a bridge for those players. He's going to provide more depth, which you can always use on the outside. Keep in mind, Alexander Smith missed half of last year with an injury, right? You lose him again, and you, you're potentially right back to where you were last year, where you don't have a solid veteran out there. So DeBerry gives you kind of Alexander Smith insurance as well as a veteran that could be on the field. So it makes sense to me. I, I like it. I, I hope Wisconsin stays after it. This would be a big time addition from a depth perspective at a quarterback spot that, like we talked about, it kind of lacks that veteran presence, but it also isn't like bringing in three cornerbacks last year where it blocked all the young players, right? I thought that was overkill, right? Bring in one, bring in two. When you brought in three, none of the young players played. And those three are all gone, and now you're kind of back in the same boat. So I think they kind of shot themselves in the foot by bringing in three veterans because you're not going to bring those guys in to sit them. But were those guys really that much better than the players behind them? I didn't think Dort and Shaw, you know, I, I didn't think they had a great year last year. And you also didn't develop the youth at the position. So I think getting one more veteran guy to bury makes sense. He doesn't block the young players from developing. Those guys will still get reps, but he gives you a veteran presence in case a guy like uh, Jay Shaw gets – or uh, Alexander Smith gets hurt. So the fact that the coaching staff reached out there, I think they're also kind of see a bit of that need for a little bit more veteran presence on the outside. You can never have too many good cornerbacks. So I like it. Josh DeBerry, definitely somebody we're going to track. Again, this is a battle, right? You're in it with, with some big schools, so we'll have to see where it goes. As for the other positions, it sounds like, you know, running back, they like what Kate Yacomelli has shown. Um, Braylon Allen and Chez are going to be pretty good in this offense. I think they're, they're probably set there. And that tight end, Jake Pugh, has, um, you know, really, really seemed to flourish. And I think he might be in for a great year. Uh, JT Seagreaves is coming in after his redshirt season. He's an athletic freak show. So I think maybe tight end is going to be fine. Clay Cundiff should be back in the fall. Uh, you're certainly not going to use as many of them, even though Phil Longo will use tight ends. You're not going to use as many of them as Wisconsin has in the past, and you're not going to use them in as physical of a role. So I think the tight ends may stay healthier just because they're going to get less wear and tear, less bump and grind. Um, so I think it just might be a cornerback coming out of spring, whereas coming into spring, I thought, well, maybe they're going to need to add at a couple spots just to build depth. I think it might just be corner. It looks like maybe they found their guy in Josh DeBerry. We're going to track it, but I think that would be a big win. All right, coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about is this the best deepest safety group Wisconsin has had since dot, 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 fill in the blank. Let me know. We're going to talk about that next in what might be a fearsome, fearsome three, uh, like top five, basically, um, at the safety position for Wisconsin. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. As always, America's number one sports book, the sports book we go to. NBA playoffs are here. Let's go. I'm excited for it. This is the perfect time to get FanDuel. Download it now. Get your no sweat first bet. Get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, safe, secure, incredibly easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, three-pointer strain, rebounds, blocks, assists. Do it all, plus wrap it all up in the same, uh, same game parlay. Get a bigger payout, more excitement. It's a ton of fun. Every type of player prop you can think of is there, and a ton of exclusive bets as well. Plus, FanDuel, again, lets you combine all of it, just same game parlays. Everybody loves doing same game parlays. It's a ton of fun. Um, I'll tell you right now, if, if you want to get in on some of it, right, we, we talked about the Lakers uh, probably going to beat the Bulls pretty bad tonight. I like that matchup. But I also like Sacramento minus one against Golden State to open up their series. Everybody's kind of in on Golden State because of the veterans. They've been terrible on the road this year. Sacramento is getting their first home playoff game in forever. That crowd is going to be stoked up. That team's been good all year. I think they're going to take care of Golden State in game one. Now, Golden State may win that series, but give me Sacramento game one. That's where I put my money. Um, don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with fanduel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Do it responsibly, but have fun. All right, let's get it back into this. I wanted to talk about safeties, right? Because the first of all, Trestle is, you know, he came from that Michigan State system, that no fly zone. Defensive backs are a big deal to him. 
Um, he, he comes from the fickle system and that, that ecosystem there where they developed defensive backs. They caused havoc. They really did a great job in the back end. And now they're getting this safety group that they kind of inherited, right? Kamoe Latu, Hunter Wool, or Travion Blaylock. By the way, if you've seen – Travion Blaylock is like first guy off the bus type of pictures, right? Athletically, that dude is a monster. And I'm so stoked that he's able to come back, get a, get another year here. He missed last year with the injury. So that, that top three right there, that's as athletic a safety combo as Wisconsin has had in a long time. And Wisconsin's had some hyper-athletic safeties. Desmond Southward was a freak show. I mean, he could he could jump and touch his head down the goalpost, um, drafted in the third round. Natural Jamerson was a burner, like a 4-3 guy. But could you think of a top three like this? Hunter Wooler, who is just the whole package, versatile, big, fast, strong, instinctive. Um, Trivion Blaylock, who is just built like, a, I mean, something out of Cyberdyne systems. And then you have uh, Kamoy Latou, who came in last year, made a big impact. Now he's got another year in that Brady Car. He's got a year under, um, under him at Wisconsin. I think he's going to hit the ground running. And then behind them, you got two four-star young safeties, Austin Brown and Braden Moore. I mean, when has Wisconsin had that much depth where you have two four-star kids who aren't going to play? I mean, they're going to play, but they're not in that top group. And that future set up really well. You know, both big-sized kids, both great athletes, Brown and Braden, um, they're going to cause havoc with that unit. You know, and I, I talked a little bit about concerns I have defensively, um, mostly with the pass rush and depth in some spots. But the one spot I'm not concerned about at all is safety. Safety might be the best position on the team. Uh, maybe it's – quarterback safety receiver i mean let me know what what's the the position the three positions on this team you feel best about right now i mean those are my three right and when have you ever been able to say as a badger fan in the last 10 15 years maybe going back to jim leonard playing where you could say yeah safety is one of the spots i feel absolute best about you know it's it's been a minute and that unit is dynamic they're deep they're athletic they're versatile and what they're going to give jim tressel I'm not Jim Trestle, geez, Mike Trestle. Sorry about that. Uh, what they're going to give Mike Trestle is the ability to be incredibly versatile near the line of scrimmage, right? You're going to be able to walk Hunter Wooler down and then back him off at the last minute because he has athleticism to cover that deep third. You're going to be able to move Kamoy Latou around in the middle like a chess piece. Travion Blaylock is fast enough to go sideline to sideline. And then if you need to, you can bring in um, an Austin Brown or a Braden Moore and still have that size, athleticism, and versatility. I'm so excited for it. It's one of the things... I am most excited about for this entire season, not just defensively. Like I can't wait to see Wohler get a full healthy year. Cause you remember last year was kind of sabotaged with injury for him. You know, we were coming into last year thinking this is the breakout star on defense. Then he had that leg injury earlier in the year and it just snowballed. And I don't think we've seen the, the, the meteor that Hunter Wohler can be. Cause it's, it's just been obscured a little bit through injury and through youth next year, this year, I think he's going to break out. And I talked about it. He's been in the program three years now. If he has a type of season I think he can have, like, I think he's an NFL dude. I really do. Um, and that would be amazing. Heck yeah. Like, I, if he has that type of year where he could potentially jump, that means he's one of the best safeties in the country. And we should be incredibly excited about that. Um, and, again, the other players there, I think they complement Wooler really well with Blaylock and Latou. Uh, Latou is just going to be a monster near the line of scrimmage, I think, in this defense. And then once they kind of cycle through, you have Austin Brown and Braden Moore coming behind them. Uh, let me know if two questions on this in the comments. Let me know who are the what are the three positions you feel best about on the team. That wasn't really something I was going to talk about today, but talking about the safeties kind of segued me into it. I think if I had to rank them on the spot here, I'm going quarterback because I think you have a it's the most important. I think you have a star in Mordecai, and I think you have great depth. Um, then I'm going receiver. Because I, I legitimately am excited about the top eight guys at the spot. I think there's star potential, versatility, and depth everywhere. And then I'm going safety. And I don't think it's close. I think those three are almost in a tier. And I don't know what my next position would be. Like, what would your next position, maybe inside linebacker? Or maybe offensive tackle? I, I think maybe, maybe, probably running back, right? Because Braylon Allen's a star. But there's, you don't love the depth there as much. So, I think those three positions are in a tier by themselves, but let me know in the comments. And then the other thing I want to know is when was the last time you felt this good about the safety group as a whole? Maybe not just the top two or top three, but like the top four or top five. When have you been this excited about safeties at Wisconsin? Or are you like me and you're like, I don't think I've ever been this excited about the safety group at Wisconsin and what they can bring to the defense this year. This, this defense is a few pieces in the front seven 
um, being unlocked from being a, a great defense. And I know I've said, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm a little worried about it. But let's say Darian Varner, let's hypothetically game plan this. Let's say Darian Varner breaks out. Uh, he is like a seven, eight sack guy. Daryl Peterson takes a step up. Bowlers takes a step up. Well, then with this safety group and that type of front seven presence, now we're cooking, right? Now, now we're really doing something here. And uh, with the offense, I think we're going to have, that might be the recipe for a special season in Madison. So I'm excited about that. Another thing that, that came out of practice, one of the practices today is they were playing around with the three inside linebacker look uh, with Muma, Turner, and Chaney. I love that. I absolutely love that Turner, just kind of that athletic sideline to sideline guy. Muma, just a physical, um, kind of just really physical, strong running our linebacker back there. And then Chaney, I love his instincts. I think he's got a lot of Chris Orr in him. So I'm excited to see if that group kind of plays out a little bit, um, if they can get some time together. A lot of pieces that linebacker to move around. You still have the younger Sanborn. Uh, Aiden Vaughn is a guy I'm pretty high on. Uh, certainly Caden Johnson's back in there if Aaron Wade ever gets back. You know, Jeff Petroisky is still out there. So a lot of pieces that need to move around. But those three inside linebackers in particular, uh, Chaney, Muma, and Turner, I think form the nucleus of a really strong group. I can't wait to see Turner this year. That's, that's another player I'm very excited about. Uh, I think he has unique athleticism. The speed is, is really pretty rare for a linebacker. Now I want to see if he can start to be a little more consistent and put those pieces together in space. So I'm excited to see Turner this year. Um, and again, I just think the safety group is is sick. I think that's a a deep, physical, versatile unit that can do a lot. And that's one of the things a lot of great listeners on the show, commenters, and I forget the ones that said it, but they they mentioned I think that the safeties can help cover up for that cornerback depth a little bit. And I agree. I think they are going to do that. And I'm excited to see that portion of the defense as well. All right, coming up, um, there's there's a basketball take that kind of keep getting batted around. And I don't really agree with either side of it. Right. And I just kind of want to put my take out there and then just say, stop it. I don't I don't think this is worth the debate that has generated at times. I'm going to talk about that next on today's Lockdown Badgers. But first, we're going to take a quick break for our, our friends of the show. All right. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in again. Just as a reminder, we are going to be in Madison. The Lockdown Badgers is going to be in Madison the Friday before the show. Let me know. Send me a DM. Contact me on the Discord. Uh, let me know via email, whatever it is on Twitter, whatever it is. Let me know if you plan on coming. I'm trying to get a head count. I really hope to meet everybody there. It would be incredible to say thank you for watching the show and just talk badgers. That's all it is. Like anybody who's watched this show is that we try not to have any egos here. We're just badger fans that, that want to talk about the badgers, want to kind of build the community around the program. So if you're able to come out to Madison, I would love to see you um, drink, drink a beer with you, have some wings, talk badgers and get ready for the launch. Justin will be there. Rajiv will be there. I'm planning to have some nice giveaways, do some Badger trivia. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So it's Friday before the launch at Scani Bar. We're going to be there 2 to 5. Um, we're going to be setting up 1 to 2. So 2 to 5 at Scani Bar. Come join us for food, drink. Um, and the next day we're going to be there as well just to get ready for the launch and kind of pregame. So let me know if you're interested in that. I would love to hear from you. Love to see you. Um, and let's keep going here. So this is a take – that's been then I just see it go back and forth like a yo-yo. Um, and our seesaw maybe is a better phrase. I guess a yo-yo does, I don't know. Maybe a seesaw, right? But it keeps going back and forth. I see, you know, one group of Badger basketball fans kind of say, Yeah, we were so close. We were so close to being such a good team, right? We had Kansas on the rope and Purdue on the rope. Man, if we had not beaten, you know, X, Y, and Z team and this and now Michigan State, and we were there in all these games and just a ball bounces one way. We win four or five more games. We're in the tournament. Nobody's talking about this nonsense. And then you have this other group who are kind of saying, nah, you know, like we won so many close games. If you, if you just lose three or four of those close games, we're a terrible team. We're not even close to the tournament. This team is, this team is trash and they got lucky to win the games they did. I'm telling you right now, and this is only my take again, I think something we do really well in this show, we try to do nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not, but we try to never tell somebody how to fan, how to think, but where I'm at, I just I think that's a not I just think that's a silly conversation from both ends. Like we're, we're not a couple close wins from being a good team, and we're not a couple close losses away from being a bad team. We just were who we were. We were a mediocre team. Period. Okay. Uh, when you're a mediocre team, you're going to lose a bunch of games you probably shouldn't, and you're going to win a bunch of games you probably shouldn't. Right. And you don't need to go back and micromanage or, or reanalyze every single close loss and say, man, if a couple of us had gone our way, 
Well, they didn't because we're mediocre. That's why they didn't go our way. It wasn't the, the basketball gods showering their mana over the court and, and altering our fate. And you, conversely, you can't go back and say, man, they got lucky in a lot of those games. Really, this was just a bad team. They got lucky a couple of times. That's not true either. It was a mediocre team. Mediocre is just mediocre. That's all it is. I mean, I just just say stop trying to make it into something it's not. It was a mediocre team, period. It wasn't a good team. We weren't a couple of close games away from being good. Uh, you know, there's a reason we dropped those close games. And it also wasn't a bad team. We weren't a couple games away from being bad. We just were who we are. And the other thing I want to talk about, and this might be the spicier take, if nothing else happens, if nothing else happens in the portal, right? Noah Reynolds is the only guy we had. This team is five wins better next year. I, I'm willing, I would say this team is five wins better next year with just what's on the roster and Noah Reynolds. And if you're five wins better, I would say three to five. I think five. If you're five wins better, I mean, you're pretty easily a tournament team, right? You're, you're probably a game above 500 in the Big Ten, and you're, you're solidly in the tournament. Now, whether or not that, that meets people's expectations if, of what Wisconsin should be, but I'm telling you right now, this team is better. With nothing else added, this team is three to five wins better next year. I, I'm, I'd be stunned if they weren't. Connor Seachin is going to take a huge jump. Right, we we saw one of the best freshman scores in Wisconsin history, the best freshman shooter, maybe in I don't know since uh, I'm drawing blanks here. You know, the true freshman shooter at Wisconsin that shot that well. It, he's absolutely going to get better. He's going to hit the gym. I, I've already been told he's going to hit the gym. Like I I can pass that along. Um, I think Gus is going to play right away. And even if Gus is just coming in as a sixth or seventh man and playing 15 minutes, that's 15 minutes that a player like Carter Gilmore was playing. And quite frankly, he wasn't giving you offense. Noah Reynolds is going to come in and be a better bench guard than anything we had last year. Okay. I mean, Chucky Hepburn's going to be incrementally better. Steve, Stephen Crowell's going to get incrementally better. I mean, people will say, well, Hepburn's kind of maxed out. Hep Nobody's fully maxed out. Okay. Like not at that age, you, you can add nuance to your game. You can, you can get a little bit better, a little bit quicker, a little bit stronger. Right. Steven Crowell put on a bunch of weight last year. He's going to be more comfortable with that weight coming into this offseason going into next year. That doesn't mean they're going to make major jumps. Crowell's not going to make a major jump. I don't think Hepburn will either. Like, I don't I think they're close to their ceiling, but they, they're going to get incrementally better because they're going to keep playing basketball and practicing. And that's what happens when you keep playing basketball and practicing. You get incrementally better. I think um, Connor's going to take a big jump. I think Reynolds helps. Gilmore's going to play or not Gilmore. Sorry. Um, Gus is going to play right away. And I think, I think Blackwell could play a little bit as well. This team is three to five wins better next year if nothing else changes. Now, I'm going to leave it open to interpretation if people think that's good enough. I, I'll be disappointed if um, Greg Gard does nothing else in the portal. I'll say that. And I don't, think, I don't think we're done, by the way. I'm just saying we were already three to five wins better than we were last year. People disagree with me on that, but I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty confident in that. Confident in growth in certain players, confident in Gus, confident that Noah Reynolds is a solid piece off the bench. I could be wrong on any of that, um, but I don't think I am. Anyway, that's the show today on Wisconsin. Appreciate you all as always. Let me know if you have any comments, anything you want to chop up. I've been a little behind on social media, which I apologize for. I have uh, outstanding messages and DMs I have to get back to you. I promise you I read every single thing and I try to respond to every single thing. I'm not perfect at it, but if you take the time to put something down, um, you know, I, it, I owe it to you to read that and get back to you. So I just sit, we're in the middle of like transitioning. I'm, I'm working on this cabin, no excuses, but I've been a little busy, uh, but I will get back to you on those on Wisconsin and uh, let's talk tomorrow. Let's go.